All right, I've got a lot to do today and a fairly short window to do it. Got the power pulled up in the corner for the pool house. And I've got to get these uh, sewer slash septic lines uh, embedded in here under where the slab's going to be. Uh, and ready to go because after some rain tomorrow, then the crew will be back to be ready to pour this along with my shop building, I hope, weather permitting on, on Tuesday. So this is Saturday, Sunday is rain, Monday they'll be back out to finish up the uh, truing up the forms for both the shop and here. And another thing I have to do once I get these uh, pipes in the ground is come in and bring in some uh, uh, gravel in the middle to build it up. So it will have a, a 8 inch footing around for the building and a 4 inch slab in the middle. This project began with moving the old pool house around to the other side of the pool near the garden to become a tool shed. Moving a 2,500 pound 8 by 12 foot building was a real challenge, but I got it done. Next I had to relocate the pool pumps and filter back about 10 feet so that they would sit next to the new pool house. I also had to build a temporary enclosure for the breaker box, pump controls, and salt generator. More recently, I ran a new water line to the pool house, which also branches off to provide water to my future shop building. The new pool house will look something like this. The software rendering is crude, but it shows the general layout, but not the color or styling. It will have a powder room on the left and a storage room on the right. The styling will look much like the porch I built for our mudroom. Here's a look at the floor plan. The building is 8 feet deep by 14 feet wide with a 10 by 14 foot porch on the front. I have already buried a section of water line under the slab form. It tees up through the slab for water into the pool house and continues past the slab and is capped for future water runs. This section of pipe will be joined to the new water line in a valve manifold box that will be just behind the pool house. I made marks on the form boards indicating where the studs will be so that I can position the pipes in between, which include a toilet, the water line, and a combination sink drain and vent, also known as a wet vent. I also included some stub outs for power, low voltage lighting, and speaker wire. I attach the rear form burn and make sure the form is square. Next I take measurements to find the lengths of the 2 inch and 4 inch pipes that are needed. Then I take them to my basement shop to cut to length. When I don't have a deburring tool handy, I use the PVC pipe pieces themselves to do the job. Back at the job site, I do a dry fit before gluing the pipe together. Starting with a wet vent. Then the 
toilet line. And then the section that exits the slab. The clean out will be just outside the slab. By the way, I'll install a small septic system behind the pool house. It won't take much of one since this is a seasonal bathroom that won't get much use. Along the way, I keep checking to make sure I have a proper fall on the pipe. It's recommended that the fall be between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch of fall per foot of pipe. The toilet flange is supposed to be 12 inches from the wall, which means 16 inches from the edge of the slab, accounting for the two before bottom plate and one half inch of drywall. If you have plumbing experience, you may notice that I'm starting out with a sanitary tee for the toilet to feed into the septic line, which is not correct. Left as is, it would likely cause problems with clogging the line. Not to worry though, I realize the mistake and fix it later. Stay tuned for part two where I do some tractoring to get gravel in the form, fix my plumbing mistake, and finish getting the form ready for concrete. If you enjoy these videos, please help me keep them coming by clicking the like button, commenting below, and subscribing. Thanks for watching.